said, we will start we'll off. forego the approval of the minutes till we have a quorum, and then we'll move into the um, general comments for the overall view of the comments. Yeah. So, I guess, Karen, are you going to lead us sure. in a little bit of discussion? Sure. And, matter of fact, if I can uh, get Apple TV to come back up, I, I will take some notes on screen um, for us. Am I in your way? Um, no, they can see around that. Sorry. Uh, nope, not at all. No problem. Just want to get back to. There we go. Something's off with the uh, um, color in there. So, um, but I think we yeah, can. Yeah, so uh, Everybody gets to see my code. Uh, all right. So. So to, I think what we wanted to do was start with sort of some big picture items um, before we got into the nuts and bolts, because there's lots of nuts and bolts to talk about. Um, and I gave you a couple of prompting questions, but by no means are those all. Um, but if these make sense to you, we can certainly start talking um, about these. Um, uh, and the way I thought about the big picture was you know, sort of the structure of the plan, um, you know, um, imagery, how are we portrayed, are we pleased with that, um, you know, is there consistency across all the different types of chapters, um, you know, did we capture the big ideas that we heard at Planapalooza, um, and really the readability factor. So um, those are the things that I was thinking about as I read through, um, but perhaps why don't we start with the structure? Um, and anybody have any comments regarding how it was put together? <coughs> I think for the most part it flows from you know area to area, but those things that need to be weaved in uh, seem to be mostly like for example transportation touches a lot of the bases. Mm -hmm. uh, that that gives you a good flow. I think the biggest thing I wanted to start with was the, the, the cover. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Karen's been thinking about the cover too. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about the cover. And I, think she has, I think she <laughs> has a example, an example, or many uh, examples, but I think the one I saw was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, it seems to me that, that if we're talking about the marsh as one of the defining characteristics of the town, it's a no-brainer to go with that and emphasize that on the cover. And we probably have, you know, most people have seen the, you know, the winding river shots that we have along with the marsh. We've got some pretty good shots of the marsh with, with birds. We've got a bunch of them. And if you like, what we could do um, to bring up some of the detailed uh, um, work on the planet is I could bring everybody five or six different shots of the marsh. And we can look and say, what does everybody think of? Because I looked at our logo and it's yeah. cattails and you know the marsh is, is really mm -hmm. important. And I saw an example of one picture. Yeah, actually, um, let's see if I can get back to my. Um, oh no, it's not on this one. I was going to say I used to have the winding river. Your screen, your opening screenshot was a yeah. yeah. Okay. And I do, I do think it's important to make sure that. Other parts of the town are captured and represented throughout the plan, which I think generally they are. But I would agree that there's no denying that the marsh is kind of emblematic. I didn't really notice any any particular issues with the way that it's organized or structured. Um, it seems like fairly logical. So, and the graphics are good. I mean, the mm -hmm. graphics jump. It is certainly uh, eye-opening and it's mm -hmm. not. I mean, there's, there's enough of a variety of types mm -hmm. and icons and right. graphics and charts and things. Uh, I think the one thing that I'm a little having trouble with is the, su the suggested plan the, uh, I forget which chapter it's in, but the, the redevelopment of Oak Hill and some of some of the some of those the conceptual old, renderings yeah, just don't that. make sense. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to see the, the small images, but looking overall and knowing the town, um, it, does, it 
they don't seem they don't really I don't see how they would ever evolve in that sense. I think so. the, the other thing is that history, because uh, I'm old, I guess that's why I think about the history, but some way of intertwining the history, I mean, we put it all up front, and we don't want to put much, I mean, we don't want to, we're not writing a, a novel about it, mm -hmm. but, and I have to use my own neighborhood because that's the way it happens, but um, my neighborhood is, uh, was thought about in 1922. And it was a map designed with 75 by 75 foot lots for development. In 1929, the stock market crashed and they were quite ready to go with the building. So that's, that, was the, that was the plan. And so nothing happened until the early to mid 40s um, about that development. And it was, uh, the name of the family was Nielsen and he built the first house. And then Jack and Jack, because nothing square. Uh, build the rest of the houses on, on the streets within that. It was supposed to have four streets and that they only had three because they ran out of you know, building money. So taking that factor maybe and you know and winding where did we come from to when it's appropriate within that might be a better way of keeping that history alive uh, but exemplifying what's happened over time. You know, it might be just a simple small paragraph. And it just, just as it's generally recognized and it's always pointed out why it is that Scarborough doesn't have a town center and that there's, it's more a series of scattered villages and it's a function of topography and other things. And I do think, you know, that it, without belaboring it, it, it would be good where it's appropriate to weave in a little bit of, a little bit of background on why it is, you know, if you're talking about a specific area, you know, why is it that the street pattern historically developed this way. And they, you know, they talk, to give a more contemporary example, there's a section where they talk about uh, dead-end streets and why it is, you know, they, they mention, as I've, you know, as we've talked about before, that um, there's, you know, sometimes there's a market demand for that because family, you know, reduced traffic. In recent decade, it's been, it's been considered kind of, I think the word they use is there's kind of a, a kind of um, cachet, or I think they were, use the word panache, I'm not sure that's quite right, but basically that there's, you know, in, for individual homeowners and home buyers, there's a certain appeal to dead end streets and cul de sacs, and that, that there's a tension kind of between that and what most people would consider to be kind of sound planning practices. Right. Yeah. And, I, and so that's, that's just an example of how, along the lines of what you're saying, Judy, that. Um, I think it's good to have these discussions grounded in why why have things developed the way that they yeah. have. So that we talked about that at transportation last night as well, about those dead end streets. And I think the other thing you say, you know, why it, why was it built the way it was? It was because of how much water we had. Mm -hmm. And if you know, we have Blue Hill, we have we have Honeywell Hill. So that most of the, the structures were built on anything that was above sea level, so that you know, we wouldn't run into problems. And the transport was costing ten cents to go across the marsh, and it wasn't that safe. But they could go the back roads and not lose ten cents on their product once they got into port. And then the other factor is why were the houses like, in my area? They're not. They're fairly close to the activity center when people are starting to walk in, but not always have. Uh, I think they had a feeling that they wanted to uh, be in a rural area, but close enough to the amenities of a, a, a suburban world, and, and that's why they're out where they are. I think that's a piece that, that could definitely be um, really uh, pumped up, if you, if you will, particularly since one of the things that we kept hearing over and over again at Planet Palooza was people love the, the distinctiveness of the different neighborhoods, and I'm not sure that we really characterize that anywhere, mm -hmm. and whether that's a, a timeline of neighborhoods and, you know, development patterns of they those neighborhoods. They put a little bit about the neighborhoods in there, mm -hmm. but not, mm -hmm. not anything that would give you a thought food right. processing, you know. Yeah, and I think doing that with the names of the neighborhoods gives people some identity and it really 
you know, no. brands it as this is really the sweet Even with the new, new the new latent property development, mm -hmm. the people that live there and over are where they can go by a fire path um, from Maple to into the, the development. You know where they do their walking? Mm -hmm. In the <laughs> They come down Green Acres, they go up and back, Maple, you know, Route 1 and go back, Maple. There are so. umpteen different loops you can do. Yes, there are. You do them. You do them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 and so it's yeah. a wonderful yeah. walking area. Right? You know, we, we still haven't installed the one from Green Acres down along to the, that, that was supposed to be, but that's the bridge to nowhere. It's at the end of Green Acres. But, you know, but there's a, some, a lot of connectivity there, and then people enjoy the walk. So how do folks feel about, you know, I think we're used to seeing the traditional goals in a comp plan. How do you feel about the way they sort of treated um, um, I had to those? look hard for it at first, right? Because right. I wanted to see what, what were, the, where were we coming from to, and mm -hmm. what we wanted to. Yeah, the going forward part of the yeah. whatever it's called. And I think bringing some examples into that all these, all these early thoughts and all these, these good things that we want to achieve need to be integrated with yeah. the imagery or some examples so people can understand. Exactly. And it, you know, and it doesn't because I think in the beginning we talked about the history being boring and people, would, but if you attach it to something that makes the rest of it flow, yeah. it uh, well, it or answers the question that's out there. Fascinating when you can tie it to a historic photograph. Which have done a lot of in here. But. Yeah, Becky Delaware, I that was my other thing. They, she identified each of the photos, but all, all of the other photos are not classified as figure one or figure two, and then identified where they are. And some of them are not in Scarborough, so we don't want them. And that, well, and I, it's maybe jumping around a little bit, but that's one okay. of my general comments, global comments about, about the document is that overall there's great imagery, but I think, I think that I would personally like to see any photos that are of specific places in Scarborough identified as such, mm -hmm. just a very basic caption. And if there are sort of stock photos used to, to illustrate other planning patterns elsewhere or what have you, that those be identified as such. Yeah. So, you know, sort of like we've done in the design standards, as I recall, where um, it'll say, you know, example of, of a retail strip in, in another community. Mm -hmm. Notice how this is done this way, something yeah. like that. Becky did that with her, Becky Delaware from the yeah. museum. And mm -hmm. She, she uh, identified, and I think there were four pictures, and she identified what those yeah. were, you know, where this is where so and so painted. I think part of it is you want to avoid, you know, what you want to, to me, I think you want to avoid the impression that, especially given that this was a consultant, that they just threw in mm -hmm. some Getty images to fill out the, and I, I, I don't think they've done that, but I, I wouldn't want the casual reader to think that, oh, this is just a generic yeah. photo of a beach or, um, or, a, or a shopping center. Yeah. And I think we, we have a lot of new residents who don't know too much about the history. It might entice them to, do, to read more of it. If it, mm -hmm. if it flows with something carrying it, mm -hmm. it, it uh, might give it more meaning to you know, what a great town they've chosen to. And to get back to the, the comment about, or the question about, you know, where the goals are presented. I think that may tie into Rick's comment last time about having sort of an executive summary. Because mm -hmm. um, I think you could, and this is pretty common even in technical reports in various fields where you, you, know, you may have a thick report that's broken up into sections with appendices, but at the very beginning you have an executive summary that tells you what it is, why it was done, who did it, what the key findings and recommendations are, and in this case, goals, and then you know can reference that these were discussed in more detail yeah. further back. That way, you kind of you can kind of see and you know kind of a microcosm. Did they do a summation too? Yeah. Executive like summation. They didn't in in the they didn't in this didn't in this draft, but it was something that was seemed to be there seemed to be some, some yeah, consensus. Yeah, then, you know, exactly. And did and we did we do we feel we have met that goal? based on input from the citizens of the town and, you know, and in what ways can you demonstrate that? And we had a great conversation with them. That's one of the things that we've, we've asked for. It's like we, we need an executive summary. Or, you know, I think we've also talked about having 
you know, a fact sheet, if you will, that just, you know, the bullet points of the, um, what's going on. So they're going to, um, they're working on that, and they're also working, um, FYI, they're working on the um, state, in the index for the state folks so they can check it all in terms of what we yeah. to the areas, yeah. yeah. So they'll, you know, we anticipate um, getting that, I think, next week, and we'll send it up to the state. The states, again, I think we've talked about, they're primarily interested in the future land use plan. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, they just want to know, did you talk about it? So the state gets a draft. Yes, they, and they, yeah. we, we asked them about that early on, and their feeling was we prefer the draft, uh, because if we have comments, we don't want you to have to go back and... Mm, yeah. That's identified in the minutes of the last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the table of contents. Just as an overall question, do you think it would be better if each of the sub-bullets had page numbers? So you could flip to them easily at the end? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of... Yeah. Certain things you know, are interesting, more interesting to me, and I, it took a while to... Yeah, because like trans that, you know. transportation covered page 58 to 70 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some big sections there. Big sections on like it. Anything you can do to make it more yeah. user friendly and more And then there, there are little spotted things elsewhere, which would be those yeah. extra page numbers where the transportation is brought into mm -hmm. you know, one mm -hmm. or the other. Just in general. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, it, it seems like, too, and, and maybe it's something that we can provide them. Um, on occasion, it seems like it'd be great to have like a pull-out quote from a citizen or from something that happened, you know, at Planet Palooza, mm -hmm. just because there's some really great comments, and I don't, I didn't see them in here. I mean, I see them in Planet Palooza, mm -hmm. but um, you know, nice and that article folks. that was written by Jamie Chris 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 something uh, a couple Sundays ago. I don't know if you saw that, but. It got a big headline, Scarborough is great. We talked about the Eastern Trail and, you know, and the, the marshes and everything. It's a really nice article. A couple, a couple Sundays ago, even one Sunday ago. I have a copy of it. I can't find it. But it became this very uh, crazy discovery very much for its part of the obvious. That's it's exactly the name of the right. Yeah, it's high Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. I have a lot of notes here. <laughs> well, and that's what I thought, but I'm like, nothing's moving. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, um, oops, uh, I just wanted you to know. That. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, for the folks at home, I have all that typing, and it's only resulted in one sentence. <laughs> up there. All right, up there. Yeah, right. I swear there's more. I thought I saw more before. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So, uh, I thought the quality of the photos was pretty excellent. I mean, they're, they're Yep. They're clear and except the ones that aren't just kind of <laughs> <laughs> the mean, especially the mean imaging. Yeah, yeah I think it's it's okay to good. to me it's okay to use non Scarborough photos as long as there's a really specific reason for it and that, that they're identified. And if they're small maps, it's <coughs> a reference to the major like Payne Road, Dunstan, Oak Hill, two ninety five. And, and, and out, outside here and down, and down in, so that you can get an idea of what they're talking, what they're talking about, where they're it's talking about. Because I was trying to figure out where is this, where is this. Yeah. Just for the record, we're not laughing at Judy. We're laughing. No, they're laughing at this. The, uh, the one sentence. The fast the, uh, I know. Notebook that has a mind in itself. So we want an introductory executive summary and a, and a mm -hmm. closing. Um. Talked about weaving history. Yeah. Uh, minor point, but do we have to put TM next to every time a uh, plan of blues is mentioned? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Apparently, I think we do. Mm -hmm. If that, they put it in, I'm not, I wouldn't yeah. go back and edit it, but yeah. if they do, yeah, it is trademarked. That actually reminds me of another general comment I had, which was um, it kind of gets to some of what we were talking about a couple meetings ago about. This feeling that sometimes they can get a little too cute yeah, in the language, right, you know. yeah. and there's the you know they talk about there's the term gas backwards, which they I can't remember whether they use the TM on it, but I think it's capitalized, and I think it I think it's a great concept, and it actually it is consistent with with our design standards and what we want to do, um, but I think again, and this gets back a little bit to um, wanting to avoid 
among other things, wanting to avoid the impression that you know we have this consultant that's got these kind of proprietary mm -hmm. um, kind of catchphrases or almost brand branding uh, branded concepts. So I personally, if I were if I were really doing a close copy edit of it, I would recommend it that maybe you use the term once and you know and so called reference. gas backwards, right. mm -hmm. and then leave it at that and not. But it, in that section, yeah. it's kind of it comes up again and again, and it's, it's a little, it's a little much. Um, that's so. I, you know, what, what we wanted from them was some creative thinking, and I guess that's part of the, the comes, that's the baggage that comes with it. Is right. some cutesy here and there. Yeah, because yeah, you usually which is fine. Yeah, it's just fine and yeah. in the right doses. Identify it you know, once yeah. and move right. on. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, and so that was a you know a, a question I'll throw out to you guys. I think one of the things that Jane and I noticed when we were going through it is there uh, there's a lot of things that are sort of phrased as recommendations that we really already do, mm -hmm. um, and so we probably need to clean that up and either say you know. This is great, it's in the zoning ordinance now, but you could take it to a new level or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of places where you feel like, oh, gas backwards is brand new, but right. like you said, they're right. Right. it's already in the design standards. Right. Um, so what's that next piece? Yeah. Right. You know, because the ordinances are not, are not written in stone right. and they always right. need to be added to at some point in time. So we keep a close eye on it over time. They're, you know, they're Sunset clause or anything like that. I'm sure if Susan and Alan were here, they would echo what you said, Karen. That you know, we, we want to make sure we recognize what we're already doing. Yeah, because we don't take credit for a lot. Well, you know, part of so much. Just a little. To me, just a little bit of it is taking credit, and the other part is so that it doesn't appear like, oh, it's this exotic, crazy yeah. concept that you know that. And I, I think a lot of zoning is like that. The average person doesn't. Probably can't tell you what zone they're in, right? Right. Or what the what the design standards are, unless they've had the occasion to be in front of us. So if they read it in the abstract, they're like, "Well, that's I don't know. That might fly in in Boston or Tennessee, but I don't know about Scarborough." So to the extent that we can show that it's in some cases a continuation of practices that we were already following, it's, I think it's good. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and that can just be done in a bullet point. You know, the zoning ordinance. You know, um, addressing uh, you know complete streets or something like that. Here's the zoning ordinance, or the uh, we already have a set of ordinance. Here are all the details, mm -hmm. are the bullet points that we already do. Yeah, yeah. like ordinance written and whenever it was completed and changes were made when necessary due to uh, you know, the topography. And I think that helps. With, hopefully, helps enhance the credibility too to demonst to demonstrate that. A familiarity with not only the town generally, but our but our ordinance, our existing ordinances. And, <coughs> mm -hmm. so. and I guess on that note, and maybe it's really um, relegated back to when we look in detail at the um, uh, the land use plan. But there there are a couple of sort of hanging sentences that are like, mm -hmm. well, and we should do um, you know we should. We should look at doing a character ordinance for the rest of the town, and I feel like that needs more clarification or more, more, or, or you know we need to either either reaffirm that that's true. Um, I think you know from our perspective we we sort of got this hybrid uh, ordinance that you know relies on performance standards where possible, and we're certainly getting away from the standard uses, but does it make sense to try to move to a full-fledged um, character zoning for the entire town? And I don't know how you guys, I don't think you have to decide, but if that's not really the direction that we think we should be going, we might want to think about how we characterize that. Is it like Hagen speech versus? Yeah, so we're going to throw away the use. Because, because four again, four of four how they're selling. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't put those big houses. I mean, they took away the view, the view of everybody else behind them. You know, what? It wasn't my choice. You know, yeah. It seemed 
worked okay with the residents that were there. So. But it is, in, in, in reality, if you were to, regardless of the merits of it, if you were to implement that on a broader scale, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And that's a fundamental change in how we do. Yeah. Right. Well, we that's what happened at Higgins. I mean, so. it, it, it didn't match what, what you had to work with to begin with. And by, by doing it towards the character, I think it's been quieter there. It's been, you know, more... And, and, and I think it really works in, in yeah. uh, well, certain were, places. And yeah. as you know, there were some really specific reasons for why that was right. done there, uh, given the specific nature of that area and the, and the, the backlog with the ZBA. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. traditional zoning didn't really work. Right. It wasn't right. really a good you know, mm -hmm. the tool, wasn't working there. Right. So, yeah. so that, that section just feels like it needs a yeah. little more definition. Yeah. Um, I think we'll find a lot of it when we get moved to Pine Point in the time. So we need to be thinking forward are there any other areas in town away from the beach that have that same double message. Uh, it has freed up the CBA. Yeah, yeah, that's good. They, then we also have a, like a pre Higgins Beach review, right? And then in some of the back say you meet all of the because yeah, it's silly. They ask the same questions every time somebody comes for it, it is, and they right, and it costs money every time. So I mean, they, they, we have to take in speech administrative review now, right? And move forward, which mm -hmm. I think it's been a great. That's asset. good. Yeah. yeah. But there's always things to be added. To right. Um. So I guess check off on on imagery. I know we talked a little bit about that, but. Do we feel like the town of Scarborough was was portrayed well? I mean, if you didn't know anything about Scarborough and you're reading it through, would you would you want to live here? I think if we added some of the things yeah. like how yeah. yeah, we got there and bring, bring that thread through. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think given this format, it certainly it's, it's a very contemporary, and very um, modern look at, at the town in, in terms of it. Again, its graphics and its setup and the way it was, you know, your initial, um, your first instinct when you look at this is that it's, in, you know, oncoming and thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of modern. Exactly, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I thought there was a mm -hmm. look at the town. Yeah, so without was looking at the interior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. When I was on town council and we, you know, went to any workshops and things and other communities are looking at how they could take care of things, I always came away with, we were five steps ahead already. Right. I think the you know the there's some good people shots too. I mean I just as a general comment and I don't know if there's you know maybe it is for better, you know it's just the the demographic reality. There's not a ton of ethnic diversity shown there. Um, you know I'm not saying that you that there need there should be some arbitrary. Um, but um, it's just a comment, just an observation. Um, I think we should at least be intentional about and aware of. Um, you, know, some, you, know, you could make the argument that you know, if we, if we, if we talk about Scarborough being diverse in numerous ways and we want to have housing diversity, that maybe you want to be somewhat aspirational with, with, with the way that, that the people of the town are I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't have any issues with the right. images that are in there, but it's just, it's just a general observation whether it merits any changes or not. Um, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I graduated in '61 and I was always cast as because when we did the plays, it just came off some break. I was always cast as the movie. And as we talked about it at the 50th reunion, it was interesting there was a boy in the class, and he also had that lineage. I think. Pardon me, I'm Italian, Spanish, Spanish, and French. And he had some of that same thing, and they did the same with his, his uh, position. But it never faced anybody. You know, it's, it's, it's been going on a long time. Um, so, in terms of consistency, do we feel like the various chapters were treated? Equally, is there anyone that you felt really wasn't as well defined as others? <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. Yeah. Um, was there anything?
anything missing that you think we covered at Planet Palooza or um, Planet Palooza got two votes out of five five areas. Maybe they didn't have enough <laughs> mention of Planet Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, that's good. And did, did you did anybody notice any internal conflicts? There's um, no, yeah. <laughs> no section that's a, that is making us do two yeah. opposite things. Sometimes when it gets wordy, then you, you've got to go back and read it a couple mm -hmm. times. So where are they going with the state? Yeah, um, there's there's some there's some editing that needs to be done. There's a few like paragraph long sentences that could be broken up, and um, but that's that's and, and that we can take care of. You can you can tag that in red when you when you and Jay exactly and Jay and exactly. Right. And you know, it's to be expected that different people wrote different sections of the brand. Right. That's pretty that's pretty yeah. obvious. One sort of just kind of basic, very basic editorial thing that I did happen to notice was on page I'm thinking of it on page sixty six, where it talks about connected and unconnected roads and streets. And toward the bottom of the the, the, the bottom paragraph on in the left hand column, makes reference to a randomly selected Google map image. Scarborough Street, and I couldn't find that anywhere. Okay. And I, to me, that and I, I will not claim to have gone through and checked every single mm -hmm. reference like that, but it just it does make me question whether there could be others. Uh, and I'm sure this, you know, this has been a, a working yeah. document, and I'm right. sure there have been things that have been added and taken out and moved around. So that's just a basic kind of mechanical thing that they want to go and check. <laughs> right. So, the energy committee's talked about it a little bit in transportation. That's quite likely. So we're trying to identify that street. Is that what the, I know what I know where that is. But it's sort of a weird statement. Yeah, shown here simply as a discussion example. Yeah. I mean, we know there are a lot of neighborhoods in town with cul-de-sacs. Right. Um, but I. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could have a separate discussion about whether there's any benefit to showing a specific neighborhood map. I think that, di that diagram with the interconnected versus the connected street says it best. Right, on the next right. hold that we have. Is that the one that has the five? Here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, yes. That one. Yes. Okay. So, right. there could be some benefit to showing them. Showing them. Street map. So on page 61, they have traffic volumes from 2002. That's, by the time this is you know, adopted, it's 17 years ago. There's been a housing market. <laughs> right. I noticed that too. I noticed that too. Yeah. I think that. And we had a new new update. That was before the last comp plan update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> in that too. So. Great. That, that's yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I have to admit, I, probably like a lot of people, every time you look at a map, you kind of focus in on, well, how does it show my area? Right, <laughs> and that's why we're saying so it was an arrow down. Right, exactly, exactly. But if you had some arrows, at least you could know yeah. where you're looking. Yeah. You know, just an arrow in and say, well, this is, you know, route one. Or this is I think there's 16 traffic data that are in a lot of weeks, if not right. 17. It has yeah. to be. Exactly. Yeah. Packs would exactly. never have given us any money. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's something, yeah. We can, we can take care of that. And it, it, there are just some <laughs> visuals, um, I think Judy and I were talking about it um, just before we uh, started. You know, the, on the future land use map, the colors don't represent well. Like, it, mm -hmm. when I first looked at it, I thought, you just made Scarborough, um, uh, Heights Park by residential. That's not what they did. They uh, the, they just need to work on their uh, the visuals. Oh, I had a similar thought about the um, there's in the there's a section about uh, about flooding, coastal flooding, mm -hmm. and I had a hard time. Again, part of it was I was looking at a where's my neighborhood ball right. right and, I, and the, the, the images, the way that they're shown here, they're fairly small, and there are a lot of color gradations, mm -hmm. and it doesn't read super well. Right. Um, that's just a general. Um, right. And there's no reason that there can't be a fold-out map when we need, when when required. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Scarborough's a big town. We might need a little extra space. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It's long too. Exactly, and it can easily be.
fold it and back and you know, there's, there's I think that the, I was looking for some pictures of the sea rise and the effect of the beaches. And we've got some good pictures because I was on the council and we looked at that and replaced the wall. And we, we, we matched the pictures to the vintage pictures that's already done, the mm -hmm. historical component of it, so that you could see how far out into, towards the ocean the buildings originally were versus what it looked like now. And we had both pictures in that report. So if you're looking for anything, I, I don't know if they got that report. Okay. Okay. So big ideas? Do we miss? You know, was there anything that you could remember that we talked about that fell through the cracks? Scarborough Downs. Scarborough Downs is going to have to be updated. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. 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 Um, I look at the proposed, you know, these and the Oak Hill proposals, and it would have been really nice if they'd done a study, just as a, a topic, you know, as a, you know, uh, yeah, devil's advocate to what's been going on, right. but to see their perspective on a couple ideas for right. what would happen. To and that's also in the report, because we did yeah. a, a table session with two different, three different tables having the same map, much like we did at the point of the Lucy yeah. intro. And some, yeah. some things there to yeah. so what other things might solve some of the problems. I, agree. And I, I think there are elements in, that are described in perhaps the Oak Hill um, that, that are going to apply to Scarborough Downs as it develops. Mm -hmm. We certainly know more about what their master plan is going to be, and we just have to rewrite that section yeah. to, to mm -hmm. talk about it. It has to be included. Yeah, because the Plan there, you know, obviously we should exactly. talk about um, taking ownership of it potentially. and. It was a major topic of conversation. Right. But it, Absolutely. It's been and a moving that, target, so it needs to be a, you know, updated. Because that broad term pain road thing, I mean, the owner, the current owner of the land, that's not working for people, you know, doesn't want that straight. Yeah. So that, that, that's something that uh, um, we, we need to address, and I think that, um, uh, you know, maybe there's a little bit of uh, blending that needs to be talked about, because I think we've, we've talked about Scarborough Downs as, as you know, having the main street and maybe creating that downtown area that we we lack, and I think I think it looks like it could use a little bit more um, tying it all together. And I thought at one point that they did um, like a walkability map, um, and maybe I'm just thinking that it was part of the downs no, when they did no, that. No. Um, but I think some visuals helping people understand the yes. difference. Yes, we did. Not in the 2006 comp plan, but the comp plan before that. Uh, what's the fellow's name? It was self but anyway, yes, we did. We did do that. Okay. Because yeah. uh, he gridded out. He gridded out the municipal center area because we weren't even talking several right. down sure. time. He gridded that out as a back street and how it could develop so that there was traffic, some of the traffic was in there. Um, and remind me, I, it's all starting to blend together. There is a specific section that's called Big Ideas, isn't there? Or am I, am I not remembering that correctly? I thought there was... Yeah, that's all right. We can, we, we can double check, but... Um, don't, doesn't really matter. Because if this... Guiding principles, I don't know if yeah. that was... <clears throat> um, so, yeah, and so that, that I, I think just because they, they made such a, a, a point of trying to explain that the comprehensive plan is about the big ideas, I think that's a piece that we want to mm -hmm. remind people of and talk about, um, you know, these various pieces, sustainability, Scarborough Downs, all of these different, just, you know, um, uh, topics, you know, we're looking at them from the big idea perspective. And I got a sense from them that they were, they were flabbergasted by the number of committees that we have and how much work we've done at this point, too. I think so. We were, you know, because they've been to other communities where and I will say it wasn't that, as easy. You know, from my time on the planning board, anyway, people do, people certainly do make reference to those big ideas in, in the existing, the current comp plan. Yeah. So I think it is important to have those clearly articulated. Right. I can see a nice graphic of the, yep. the big ideas from, you know, even if it's straight out of plan of blues it. Um, and that would be helpful as a checkoff to make sure we actually covered all of those. Um, and it, readability, it sounds like, you know, we've talked a little bit about it. 
you're taking out yeah. these fluffs. Like it's fluffs. Kind of a continuation of what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the, the one impression that I did have is there's some repetition that I'm not sure um, makes some sense. So I think some uh, some heavy editing mm -hmm. um, could be mm -hmm. uh, could clean it up and tighten it up. I know I've always said. It's Mark Twain who said that um, what, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, we don't need to have big, we don't need to have volume. Right. Um, we just want um, quality. Well, yeah, volume would be intimidating for people and you know, wouldn't use it. Yeah. So, the more editing and the more straightforward it is, the better. Yeah. yeah we have to see how well we survey goes and people who we touch bases with a lot and they brought that topic up at the transportation committee so those folks could go back to the areas where they would Yeah. I have it looked like the, the day after the um, survey came out, we had about a hundred people actually online filling it out. So um, I haven't checked lately, so we'll we'll check and see what that is, but we're gonna there was two pages that say those numbers. Yeah. It's not impressive to me. The plan of the yeah. that, that wasn't impressive for right. like 56 people, and you know, <coughs> we won. Yeah, and I think we've, we've really gotten a, a number of ways to. Right, exactly. Exactly. Just move. Okay, so anything else sort of on the big concepts that overall um, things that we, we should talk about? Okay. So we want to move on to a plan framework and uh, talk in more detail, if anybody has some more detail um, comments. The one thing I, I would say, because I was not at the meeting where you talked about um, at least the, the first initial editing, did all of your edits make it into the plan? Did they reflect um, your comments from before? So I think you guys, like, um, it's been at least a month ago, made it probably two months ago. I think you guys did an initial reading of that, um, the framework, and the, and I think probably the chapter with the uh, with the maps. So I just want to make sure: was there something that you guys talked about that didn't get corrected or taken care of in the plan? I think we got the transportation issue. I mean, the, not the transportation, but the neighborhood information in. But then they didn't really expand on it. One thing I did want to follow up, which and I hadn't gotten to it. Um, so there was a fair amount of discussion about the, the entrepreneurship section. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's the meeting you're thinking of, Karen, but you know, there, I think there was a kind of a long in the theme of trying to avoid getting too sexy <coughs> or yes, they, kind they, of trendy sounding that we <coughs> avoid entrepreneurial ecosystem yes. and things like that. They did um, not make those edits. Yeah, okay. Uh, and that's the, we, we know that. Right. Um, okay. Um, so that chapter, that chapter I was I was there for, and I think what was happening is we were sending comments as they were finishing this up. So right. I think that was the last kind of what section review. Entrepreneur and what? Um, ecosystems and other things. There was just some, yeah. There are sections that just went on forever. Like right. there's too much yes, on the yeah. co-working spaces, yeah. and you know a lot of things that were in there could have been said in two sentences. And, and then, but that we're also missing kind of you know some basic data to support. There's kind of this prim, you know assumption that entrepreneurial entre, entrepreneurial activity is just good, and you want to have it. But the way that it read, it was just kind of like it, it seemed. Like we need to drive all our energies to yeah. that. Like yeah, and it had shortened. Right. Anyway. Right. Right. So okay, so that's um, so that's some work that still needs to be done. Yes. Um, and let's see. Um, how about focusing maybe on the map descriptions? The the. <coughs> things where, where I think it's pulled out. Yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's and, and the D 
details. I mean, and again, it's the, you know, what am I looking at here? What's north, what's south? Well, you have quite a few, quite a few sequences like this. This is similar to the, mm -hmm. the flooding maps I was referring to earlier, where they're pretty small. And yeah, yeah. And I think if you're gonna, you know, this is a planning document, so don't skimp on the on the maps. That's, right. Yeah. That's kind of my. Yeah, I was trying to figure out where I was, and for a citizen who's been yeah. here, you know. Well, where you years. are, but also what what do these different colors mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I would say my preference would be to err on the side of you know, give them give the maps some more space. I think that is a progression from the house, uh, I forget what it was, but there should be some dates that date on, on both of them. Mm -hmm. but I think the, you know, the maps are, if, if someone picks this up and starts flipping through it, the maps are, are going to be one of the big things that draw people in. People are going to want to sit there and they're right. going to start with where they live. But they're also, those are things that people are going to want to look at. So I think should make that as user friendly as possible, and make sure that yeah, make sure that there are good labels and legends, and that they're the most recent version available, and all that. Okay, do you, do you guys mind turning to like to page one hundred four, and it, you know they have uh, sort of the general descriptions of the various areas. I know, those are, I can't read those at all. <coughs> so those either need to go away or, you know, they need to be much bigger and, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I was also thinking they could use captions, like Scarborough Gallo Gallery area, or, mm -hmm. most people don't know. Just to right. give people a frame of reference, right? Because right. right. otherwise, like, to me, this is like, if you, if you were flying over, it just looks like roads and trees. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, and again, it, it'll 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 be more meaningful for what people. What other way could they, they exemplify that without right. pictures that you can't read? Yeah, yeah, I think it would help. Yeah. I think there's some editing of the color. Right, and um, so, and this is where I think you guys may have done some uh, work. That the meeting where you guys discussed these categories. Um, so I just want to make sure that anything um, mm. that was that you guys had put on the table for editing um, that it, it got marked. Um, <coughs> and again, that's where some of the, the again the linkage is between here and the the land use colors, and maybe they can tie the descriptions more directly. You know, to a color, so people can see the color and say, "Oh, I'm looking at the map in um, that area." The the one thing that I that I noticed, and like, I think it's is it the regional activity center where they talk about, you know, Scarborough Downs. They talk about um, this area encompassing like a thousand feet beyond um, Scarborough Downs. And so, what I don't know is whether or not, you know, they've got the big circles here. Whether the circles, I don't think they're representational. That's certainly more than a thousand foot uh, piece. But if they're going to put that that comment in there, they you know we might want to have a. Um, well, based on the wetlands, are you going going to get an area that has a large enough circle, I mean, a small enough circle, not to impinge upon the? Yeah. So I just think, and you know, maybe they can color code it. It's one, oh, sure. It's one of the things that I thought was, you know, the the. The future land use map was very parcel oriented. There was no, there was no slop, you know, there was no sort of um, um, uh, edges. You know, there was uh, no too many, too many hard edges and not enough sort of softness sort of representing an area. Yeah. And there is uh, one picture of that in there where it softens out from, again towards Green Acres, but it softens right. out and doesn't even. Doesn't even show the parcels that are up there right, to the right, right you know, uh, north of us. 
And yeah, so I think that the concepts, from my perspective, the con concepts were good. I just think the execution of the illustration is not as uh, not as useful. Uh, and again, I don't, you know. One basic thing, and I may not have been at that meeting that you're referring to, um, but. The omission of Pleasant Hill on here seems uh, fairly glaring to me. Yeah, that, that was the same. When you think about the way, because I think for most people who live in Scarborough, Pleasant Hill is a very specific mm -hmm. a place. It's a neighborhood that people refer to. Yeah, it's in the same uh, line on the map mm -hmm. as Green Acres. They, they feathered it out, but they didn't include those. Well, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, just looking at this. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, there's no... Yeah. There's another one. That's a very specific, there's a very specific mm -hmm. development pattern there and history, and it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's one of the villages that people, you know, it's got its own fire station, it's got its own community school, primary school, so I, I think it should be... Small parcels. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Small parcels, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think... I think we would do well to have a, um, you know, a big Skyro map with all of these neighborhoods. Um, I'm sure we'll leave like, someone out, but I think it would be um, right. I mean, I think nice if you, at some point, uh, yeah, they're they're going to be you're not going to be able to capture everything, but at least you know the ones that do it. The National Geographic is it. right, and it's it mostly it's be what is the right thing to do because these are these are the the neighborhoods that that Scarborough is built on, but it's also getting back to that, um, you know, the group meetings, the Imagine the Future meetings, where people were mm -hmm. very focused on, we have these rich, authentic neighborhoods, and we, we love that about Scarborough, that they can be so different, yep. and it almost seems to me, I can see a, a nice graphic that talks about, you know, um, Small lot subdivisions, rural lot subdivisions, and give some examples and, and mm -hmm. show it like that because that's what people, people um, like Corey, like you said, people identify with their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. No Scarborough would, would be an example of that. It could be rebuilt in, in a way because <clears throat> you've got the one that has the, that's, the back side is to the store, and then there's, there's a building where that new meat market is. And there's an empty building. You know, the buildings have gotten knocked down, but I'm sure we have ample pictures. And that was where the only general store occurred in the Nostrava area, where they bought their grains and things like that. Okay. So as we look at developing it, you know, with the street level retail and the upstairs rental, uh, it would fit nicely in, in Nostrava. Yeah. I think understanding the development patterns of the different neighborhoods yeah, is, and, is really And the different times that it occurred in, because that, yeah. was, that was way, you know, that was back in the 1800s, so probably 1750. Yeah, here's looking at the entrepreneurship, sort of the That's a generic, generic one. Generic, yeah. a hipster, yeah. oh, yeah. bearded hipster guy with his, his studio hobby and like that. Right. 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 He's in there a couple of times, I think. I think I'm sure he's a nice guy, but co-working. Yeah. There you go. Right. Well, I'm not quite getting that. Maybe I'm thick, but I'm not. This is a conservation growth map. But I'm not. I'm not getting from the map and the descriptions how it grows or how it's conserved. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe there's another evolution to this, but this is basically a description of what's here and how they're described. And then there are some examples about how it might grow, but it really, I don't see it mm -hmm. uh, shown on the map. Yeah, I, mean, I was like going through some of my papers from the where we have put the growth cap on it. Now yeah. we've discovered we've accumulated all of these and, and, and all kinds of developments going on at the same time. And it'd be interesting to compare those numbers looking at you know, yeah, what was the flows. I mean, we had some pretty specific areas of limited growth and growth and, and yeah. clean as it was defined. And, mm -hmm. and this is a little more loosey goosey, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's probably one of the. I think that's one of the requirements for the state that you definitely have to articulate on your future land use map what's limited growth. And I think those terms have to be in here somewhere. Um, you know, we can call it something else on the map as long as we find for the state. These three areas are considered our limited growth areas. You 
I think it's in the 06. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is yeah. definitely in the 06. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's tied to these descriptions, but I, it, it's a leap. Yeah. yeah. You know, how much more building do we do before we start think, readjusting again? I think one of the challenges with a document like this is there are a lot of things that those of us who are engaged in this just kind of take for granted. Mm -hmm. But you got to make sure it's really articulated and, it, and it, that it's clear why. Why, you know, that every man can understand it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Including, you know, things, things, very basic underlying things like where there's city water and sewer. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's not in here anywhere, is yeah. it? That's something that we it's just always, we talk yeah. about, and for us it's just. Yeah. Because not Scottsdale should have yeah. the city water really and the sewer before it starts having a major building. Of growth in the town that really should be yeah. stated, glued at the hip. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, I think, I mean, I mean, on the Setco website, we we took all of the commercial areas and have a water and sewer map for every one of the areas. So it's already done. We can just play them off and yeah, give them to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because um, you're right. It doesn't make that. It doesn't make that tie. These are the growth areas because we do have water and sewer. Again, you're right. Just we know it. Yeah. That's yeah. some of the major yeah. aquifers in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you can take up a lot of space with it, but it brings up an interesting point is, you know, if, what kind of an appendix will this have? Because I think at one point there was mentioned that there would be an appendix with all the facts and all the yeah. all the data that supports this. So, okay. so you don't lay that on the body of it, put yeah. the maps and put that map yeah, in the back. Yeah, put that out the appendix and make a comment. I mean, I thought that was brought up that there would be all the all the, the data and the substance and the substance behind this mm -hmm. would have some place. Yeah, I I agree. We we sort of broached that topic with Sandra the other week. She says, "Well, we don't want to put too many things in the index." And I'm like, "Right." Yeah, we do. <laughs> and we, we haven't we, done much yet. Yeah, we want to put a lot of things in the index just to ground people and say this is where things came from. The appendix. Quite a fun yes. Appendix. What is index. Index. Yes. Yeah. Appendix. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, was I just have to ask how do people feel about Hamlets versus anything else? Are we good with the Hamlet? That's not in the two next factors. That's probably next. I've wondered about that one myself, having lived in some different parts of the country. Well, I freely admit to not being a native Scarborough person. Um, to me, Hamlet always, that, that to me feels like, I don't remember, I don't remember ever hearing anyone use the word Hamlet in anywhere in New England. I mean, cozy community. Gate cozy community. I don't know. A village, maybe, but Hamlet to me sounds... Private know, village? I'm, Did you say private village? If there's anyone village? here or among the public who disagrees with that, I'd love to have this here. I'd be curious. Right. Maybe I'm the one who is... No, I've it's, always heard right. villages referred to the yes, yeah. parts of Scarborough, yeah. Yeah. not Hamlet. It's sort of like township. You know, there are parts of the country where there are, where a township is a thing. Yeah. And that's a little different because it's actually a you know a governmental unit too. But TR six thirteen. What right. what distinguishes them? But what distinguishes them? They're, they're, they're private. Well, to me, Hamlet is more of a descriptive. It's a to me, I think of Hamlet as a synonym for a village. Well, it's that it has some re regional connotations to it. But Sounds I think like it should be in the Shire. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. I, exactly. never, yeah, I, I never use it. I feel yeah. like it, it, it wasn't. Never, yeah, it's never part of our vocabulary. Exactly. exactly. I was surprised at this thing because I know. Right. I, right. right. I, I sent that back to them in, in the first comments that we wrote. I'm like, Hamlet, what the, what the heck is a Hamlet? It's, not, it's just not an expression. And the first sentence of it, the Hamlet growth sectors, which is oddly difficult to say, the Hamlet growth sectors are some of the original village areas that already provide some level of services to the neighborhood surrounding them. Well, the village. yeah, yeah, the villages. I and, and I don't want to be forced to, I don't want us to think, oh, are we going to have to change the zoning ordinance and right. town and village That's hamlets like, right. instead if it, of... If Rick were here, he might weigh in on that. Like, you know, that if you, if you use that term, then the implication, some people could infer from that that it has some special meaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So why, and, and if it's not something that we ever use, why right. why introduce it? It's an English term for yeah. village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I agree, it does sound a little bit like the Shire or something. <laughs> It's a little too, yeah. It's that cute part. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't want to force it on you, but I, I the Hamlet thing is... It clearly had a nerve, so it's good, good that you asked. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, and are we, do we, do we need to talk about specifically any of these, the, like the quarter transfer, the quarter transformation? Um, that makes sense for people. It's close to and, and so this is a, one of those cases where you know I think in a lot of this we, we are already we already have this in the zoning ordinance and it maybe just needs to be cleaned up a little um, in terms of uh, um, talking about where things are and what we're already doing and how is it how is the portal <coughs> going to be transformed. Sure that some of that is in the transportation section. Um, you know, but I think that's one of the ones that stood out to me that might need a little cleaning up. Okay. Just, just I mean, if you just could make a broad statement and have one picture, or, you know, mm -hmm. you mentioned to me about you know, having a theme run through some pages. So like, okay. So how many villages are there? I've heard seven. I've heard eight. Oh, kill. Five. But it doesn't have four. Broad turn is really not one. No, it isn't. So, we should get that right. Yes. I don't know who. Yeah, who or what would be verified. The authority on that. Some of our previous maps are closer to the Is there a Hamlet? Dunstan. Designation on broad term? I'm seeing Dunstan. No, no. 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 okay, good. Dunstan is a community. Right. Uh, that, more regional, I think. Yeah. I, that's, that's the color thing. I think it's a it's community activity center. I, it's not listed as. Eight corners is nothing. It's, it's well. Yeah. Eight corners is usually. I feel like eight corners is usually considered one of the villages. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's no circle on it. Yep. So. Yeah. I don't think it has been. So you may want to look at. Yep. Again, it's and it, you know, it's a, it's not necessarily indicative of anything, but as a reference point, you know, it's another, it's another little village area where there is a, there's a school, and it, I think so when we talk about transportation planning, right, it's, it's been, referred to as a, as a place. And it's so. been rezoned to, you know, right. reflect um, a village, you know, the, the ability to do more commercial at the um, intersection, and you've got the multifamily, the Cary Woods, it's just mm -hmm. off of that, So, and you've got Nine Central River Brewing, so mm -hmm. that area is changing, um, the dynamics are there, so we either need to say, yes, this is all good, and it's what we intended, which I think is what the 2006 Comprehensive Plan intended, so we just need to reflect that and, oh yeah. Is Proxnet considered yep. a village? Yes. Yes, there's 13. There's 13 of them all yeah, together? That's, that's, wow. yeah, that's, that's the 06. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we should see what, well, yeah. see. That's maybe a little bit. We did most of that at the end of the 06, so. Yeah. And that's a map that divides, so every part of town has, has, a, name. has a name in that. So like West Scarborough is what a lot of people would think of as broad term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not quite the same as mm -hmm. the village centers. Mm -hmm. But that's... The the 13. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry. I was looking at the corridor transformation language. Yeah. And I think the zoning does reflect a more walkable pattern. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of more development coming. Right, exactly. So it maybe should continue to encourage or so right. sort of give it some credit. Yes. It's a pretty progressive. It really the is. ordinances are pretty good mm -hmm. for, compared to other towns. Right. Um, one, one thought that I had on that, and it's come to mind. The last, you know, recently driving up and down Route One and getting frustrated with red lights. Yeah. Um, 
which is one of our favorite pastimes, but is maybe recognizing that there's a tension, not a tension, but there's some sort of a balance to be struck between um, having efficiently flowing traffic in that on the Route 1 corridor, and you can say the same thing about other major roads, but Route 1 in particular, is, you know, the, the balance and kind of the trade-offs between efficient, fast movement of traffic and walkability, um, <laughs> which is because that's, and it, it's all where you are, you know, if you're sitting in a car waiting for three light cycles at Oak Hill, or, or getting, or hitting a red light every hundred yards, um, then you, then it's a point of frustration. But if you're on foot trying to get from, trying to get from Atria to Hannaford, then you want it to be, you want things to be slowed down. Right, right. So, and I don't think, you know, I'm not suggesting any particular solution, but just as a, within the context of this document and outlining goals and challenges, it feels like there should maybe be some acknowledgement of that. Well, it's a good thing because we, we asked a specific question on the survey, yeah. so we'll have some good feedback as to where people fall in that. It's a little bit planning, you know. We we worked on that language to see whether or not how we can simplify it, but that's the that's the conundrum. Yeah. What, where do you want to fall on that? Um, and so I think the survey will help us refine refine that. We did. We talked about that in transportation yeah. last time too. That's good get the input from the other, you know, because everybody's impacted by that. Right, and again, it's, you know, things that, that we sort of, whether you're on the Transportation Committee or Planning Board or Long Range Planning, are things that we kind of just take for granted as, you know, yeah. these are good planning practices. Of course, we want to make things more walkable. Right. But to other, you know, people around town, I'd say, well, it sort of it reminds me a little bit of when Portland first proposed fundamentally changing the, the Franklin arterial. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And making it making it less of an artery and more of a street, and there were a lot of a lot of people, commuters, who came out and said, "Heck no, I want to be able to yeah, shoot down. into Portland." And I feel like that's part of the right. It's the full part of the challenge with Route One. So um, I think again, for you know, for something for a document like this to have the most credibility, I want to make sure that we right. emphasize the challenge. Yeah. Too. It, yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. But I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't. I don't remember seeing, you know, for as much as we talk about walkability and we talk about having those connections, you know, I still don't see like a heat map of, you know, um, the uh, connections or how long it takes to, to walk from Oak Hill to different areas. What are the what are the radiuses of the um, or the diameter of the circle that's five minute walk from Oak Hill? And I know that I've seen that someplace, but I, it's not in here as it far as I know. It could be in the Oak Hill study. Yeah. It could be in the Oak Hill study. Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, not planning yet, but just yeah. observation, because I come through there a lot. I end up, it's my travel route around there. There are a lot more people who are walking from Black Point Road down there. Yeah, they will sit around Dunstan as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's just, yeah, there's uh, so much talk about walkability, but yeah, that's, we don't show what that's where you <laughs> That's where you find and a lot of talk. A lot of talk about village right. centers, which kind of implies a certain, you know, some amenities available. Yeah, and a certain pedestrian scale. Um, yeah, has anyone's been has done anything with transportation? Groups that all these, some of these things are right. But about the sidewalks too. The sidewalks that have been implemented in the last ten years have been, I think. In the beginning, there was so much criticized. Why would we put a sidewalk here? Mm -hmm. There's no connection. Why would we put a sidewalk here? But now, you're starting to see them connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They just yeah. put a, another uh, course, sidewalk at the end of the Green yeah. Acres yeah. down to meet up, meet up with the walking path that yeah. goes to the bridge to the yeah. Do we that they never put that in? Jamal, do we have a map of where all the sidewalks? A current map of where all the sidewalks are? In That's a good question. The sidewalk ends. Yeah. Mike, you guys and Mike might have been sure. That, that would be, see. that would be, I, yeah, I would personally like to have it just for my own purposes, and, but it could have a use in most. But, but then you talk more. about maintenance, and you talk about winter maintenance, and then, you know, so that becomes a yeah. big financial burden. But then, you know, it comes down to, you know, with any planning as, as a budgeting, it comes down to, comes down to values, and we don't question the need to clear our, our roads. Right. So. Right. 
Again, people can debate that, but I think it should be. Yeah. I think it should you be. You set up criteria. It should be like it should be acknowledged as a. I got the side consideration. Okay. Good. Right. You don't have a plan where you can so you can say, oh, you know, we've got mm. just one little gap in sidewalks. You know. Um, yeah, we have that multimodal account. That, yeah. yeah. Because now the main veterans home has been looking to have a path across that's safe, um, but there is no place where they can go from sidewalk to sidewalk. Help us target you know, investments too. If we, um, yep. you know, there's always different yep. uh, programs that come up that may allow us to do some sidewalk funding. So good to know where we where we should direct those funds. Similar to the Eaton Trail, the yeah. gap could be a good yes. the biggest gap is right by Starbucks. Yeah. 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 One side and we were sort of on a project by project basis. That's that's nobody ever wants to do a sidewalk. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly but, it. You can see. So be helpful to show the broader context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, so we've got about, what, 15 minutes left. Um, so, uh, do you want to look at, the, how do people feel about the, the Oak Hill section? I know there was one comment earlier on that the, um, some of the illustrations are perhaps, there's not a path to get to them. Is hmm. that is that the right? Is that a way of saying what you were talking about earlier, Corey, that um, the illustrations are here, but we probably will never, they, they're not. Oh, I don't think that was, um, I think that was your comment. Oh. You were talking about the feasibility or lack of feasibility of, uh, um, of, the, of, of the detail of, here. Of some of the, right, the, sort of the pretty renderings. I, I don't personally have an issue with including things like that as long as it's made clear that it's very conceptual. Um, and I think that's part of the challenge with something like this because there, there are people who, who will look at this and think, well, this is the comprehensive plan and look what it's yeah. showing for for this place. Tearing it all down. And, uh, and uh, do they have, have they talked to all the landowners about that? And, you know, so it's... I think there's spotted areas when you're talking about sidewalks. I was just saying the, the sidewalk that uh, that should be by um, Starbucks. That the, the people that live in the motel just they have to they, they don't have a sidewalk on that side. Mm -hmm. And crossing Route One is still quite dangerous there because they don't have the no, no uh, driving and if there's an X you know, sort of, we're waiting for that. But, and, and uh, you know, so there's small pieces of people like they were saying that don't connect to each other. I do think it is possible, it's just... Okay. Yeah, it's funding, it's, uh, you know... Or, you know, priorities. really looking at something like this. Okay, yeah. just want to make sure that... Um, I, you know, I might insert the word conceptual before there I'm going there. Um, and I'm sure if the consultants were here, they would say, you need to, you need to be bold, you need to, you know, that's part no, of it. I just didn't see, I didn't know but, see the path to that. But, then that's the, mm -hmm. I would be curious to hear what other, what other people <laughs> might think about that. Because I think, yeah, there is a risk that if you show something that's just completely implausible, mm -hmm. yeah. then you're going to, some people may turn out. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I certainly love the, the look, but this is one of those cases where, like, walk me through this. How am I going to get there? Mm -hmm. um, over time. I have the very first version. Did they, the Dunstan map was um, duplicated? Uh, like pages 115 and 117 are the same map? Yep. So is that still true? or mm -hmm. No, it's the whole, the whole thing, isn't it? Then it has the key. It has the key. And so the you second can, one has the key. The, the, the caption actually says same image on pages 115 and 117. Um, and that's a real conceptual one. That's the one that doesn't show the fringe areas like Pleasant Hill and Three Acres and, and, and uh, down towards Saco. But I would think if there if there's some reason why they're doing that, they should. Right. Make that clear. I, don't, or I don't really see the. Purpose. Yeah, the double map thing was just. I think one is fine. Right. One is great. 
um, I just didn't see that. Also, just as long as we're kind of talking about mechanical editorial mm -hmm. questions, is the there are several pages page intentionally left blank. Is that just for the working draft purposes? I hope so, because that's because we don't want the plan. This isn't a legal yeah, document. Exactly. Right? It's not the feds. the right. I can see that if they wanted to, if the intent is to just leave that blank as sort of a, a separator, and they just want us to know that as as we're reviewing the draft, that's fine. But I don't think the final version should have that. Right. I agree. I think the map should have. They have some of the outer street names, but I mean, I work with maps every day, so I kind of understand. But like Route One should be identified. Yeah, that's what term. I said at the beginning. Any yeah. big maps that just so people can say, "Oh, what, that's what right." That. If you're going to go to the trouble of, of of including the map, make it nice and big, and label things so that mm -hmm. so it's meaningful to people. That's the one I was yeah. referring to as being fatted out in Pleasantville, not being clear yeah. in Green Acres and in South. It just South sort of South. shows you where you are. Yeah, yeah it gives you it gives you some place it's to start. Different. And particularly for again for newer people who live in the trouble, they need that. <laughs> comfortable with putting this forward people are going to have hemorrhages when they see <laughs> what exactly is, is this trying to tell us that right. we, we, we develop, you know, that maybe there should be some qualifier that conceptual or that, I that, need to call off Harrisburg <laughs> Dunstan and Oak Hill that these are used as base as, as a, a map base but mm -hmm. do not portray any specific area right, right. there's no intention of um, this happening, but we're using it as a contextual sort of an illustration location for Scarborough. Right. I just, I just see people taking this as reality. Right. And, <coughs> you know, and some people get something stuck in their mind. Oh my God. You never you get beyond it. They're going to come and tear my house down. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that happened with it. Scarborough Downs, too, when people were saying, you know, what they were doing. All right, so any, anything else? We're, we're not going to go on to Louisville and Resilient Scarborough. We want to stick with the, um, the uh, really the land use chapter here, plan framework. Um, anything else that we haven't talked about here? Um, I think it's a good beginning. Yeah. I thought we marked that. I wonder. Oh uh, yeah, we marked it. But yeah, it's spelled incorrectly the first time, correctly the second time. <laughs> and then down below, special thank to. Well, you know, links. you know what I'm worried about. So we we did a quick run through a bunch of these little things, and some of this, like the duplicate map and all of that. I know my copy was the original one. They were supposed to have changed. They did a bunch of these little changes for us. Um, I think we I just brought these up at the last Yeah, meeting. I think this yeah. was literally, like, we had just downloaded yeah. it the day this before. Day after. This was a week ago Tuesday. Yeah. When yeah. We, but pointed these out. we pointed those out. Yeah, so I, I just want to make sure that, that the uh, the right document is, is loaded on uh, on the website. Mm. Oh, because we he sent you right, he sent you these out um, for so I think the I think the one that's loaded on uh, Scarborough Engaged uh, has a few of these things taken care of, like this double map and a, um, some few corrections that were just you know, we really wanted to have them correct them before we we posted it. Um, so oh yeah, we should I'll, I'll double check that because I kept thinking oh I can be the only one with the old version of things in there, but good. All right, so um, the um, two things: one, we we have confirmed with Sandrine on um, the August sixteenth as the the date for um, her coming here. I believe, Karen, we've reserved the council chamber, uh, a chambers a and B, for the entire day. So the August, August 16th? 
In the beginning, we're going to do a breakfast or, or an early morning presentation at 7.30. And then Sandrine's going to be sort of just there throughout the day for an open house, people to stop in. And then we'll do, um, did we say 6 o'clock, I think, or, or 7 o'clock? Does anybody have a yeah, um, preference? 7? That's okay. what I had, but I don't know. Oh, 7.30 a.m. and then 7 p.m. So we're going to do, we're going to bookend the day. Um, and how long are those, just so I can... I think we're talking, you know, maybe a 15, 20-minute presentation. I think we're trying to keep it crisp and then, you know, open it up. So theoretically, people, anybody who's wanted to read it will have read it by then. Um, we'll have some some of the more um, some feedback from the survey, and then we'll also um, have really a, a two-page. Here's what you need to know about your comprehensive plan type of, of, of uh, piece. So they can look, look through that, um, and then that kicks off really um, a series of more interactive reviewing. So we'll do the presentations, and then. The very next week, and correct me if we've already talked about this, we talked about it a little bit. The next week, we're going to um, start doing the neighborhood meetings again. Mm -hmm. We've gotten the just like the directive, but we haven't got the location. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're going so going back to the 16th I, briefly, remind me what what specifically is at 7 o'clock? So the, it's going to be a repeat of the morning meeting. Okay. So it's going to be really the same okay. uh, presentation. It's just we're making it. Um, available for people at different times of the day. So I'm just going back up here. Neighborhood meetings. That'll be the week after. Um, but, though, but that isn't what I was working on for no. meeting space. Okay. No. No, so you're I'm good. like, wait a second, I didn't do that. Yeah, okay. you're, you're good. Yeah, okay. We need to go back I and mean, I think we'll do more Scarborough again. We'll do um, either you know, Packer Shores or Higgins Beach, um, Pine Point. Um, Dunstan. I think we're going to consider Oak Hill covered since we're doing two meetings um, the week before. Um, so we've, we've got the dates, but we don't have a, a full location yet. Right, exactly. So we're, we're going to be working on those um, uh, tomorrow, finding some, uh, well, where we will do those neighborhood type of meetings. Um, and if anybody has some suggestions of alternative places to be, by all means, let me know. Um, I keep thinking it would be great if, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, Flaherty Farms now has the, the barn. Oh, the barn. Oh, that would be nice to do um, yeah. a section, you know, a, a presentation there. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm <sort of> afraid <laughs> of. Can um, we appeal to your uh, better nature of uh, so $50 off your taxes, you know, as we do. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So I think that's the location updates. Um, public Any public comment tonight? Any, any thoughts? I guess I'll just share your concern and voice about the presenting the implausible scenarios. I mean, I think those just send a really bad message to the public. To, to the planning folks, you know, it may make a lot of sense, but to the to people who aren't familiar with the process, including myself, it just seems like you know somebody spent a lot of a lot of time doing something that's conceptually nice, you know, Disney-esque perhaps, but I mean, this is the real world. Mm -hmm. That would be my only suggestion. And that's why we're reviewing it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. Well, yeah. Let me let me continue that. Yeah. Sure. Um, narrowing narrowing Route One to two lanes. Uh, I don't think you want to put that out there. I really don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I I think you're asking for trouble. You know. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think if there's a way to do drivability and walkability. Um, that's where we should go. Definitely, I'd love to see more. Walk, more sidewalks up and down Route One, especially, uh, but I don't think it should have any any, 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 any
impediment on traffic because there's no need. Thank you. We've got smart traffic lights. And I'll, you know, just to piggyback on that, I sort of <coughs> expand a little on what I said before. I think it's it's tricky because, again, I, I think you know people are in the business of being professional planners or at a master planning level. They're they're kind of in the business of pushing boundaries and pushing envelopes, and they want to be somewhat provocative. And I would admit, not to put words in their mouths, but I have same dream the other consultant were here, they might say that, that you know, we, we want to we want to get people's attention mm -hmm. and get, you know, spur people to think about things that are a little outside of the box. But I think if you if it's so far out there that people just either discount it or get really alarmed, then then it's counterproductive. So yeah. I think I think I'm not sure exactly where that line is, but I, I think it is a good comment. I think that was our one of our first reactions when we first looked at yeah. the, some of the the shop pieces they were giving us. That's not going to fly. Yeah. It's ridiculous, you know. Yeah. It's, Maybe it's, it's brought down to two flowers. Or something. Little, yeah. little tiny, you know, micro images of it. But as a whole, it just, it's disconnected from reality. And I, th I think I know people. Yeah. Right. And I think part don't of what change. Part, I think part of what, um, this gets me a little bit to the public comment, is I think part of what could be, um, could raise alarms is the, the level of detail that is shown. Because it does imply that, <coughs> wow, someone's really someone's really spending time in three lives. Right. It's right. already and it, we know that that yeah. the people do that sort of thing all the time. Right. Um, and it's just an exercise, but I think it is it's a yeah. it's but a I think we need to find comment. out from the surveys too is how much change do the people that live here really want? I mean we've got People who have been here a long time, we've got people that have only been here five or six months and wanting to mass change things. You know? So, you know, hopefully we'll get a good input. Um, I did share with everybody the letter from Dick. I can't remember if he used to do the video. What's Dick's last name? He used to do the cameras, but anyway, it was a letter that he wrote and just asking a bunch of questions early on. Alright. Um, next meeting we've gone over. Yeah. So, um, can I say one thing?